We're not perfect yet. Anybody knows that? I ain't perfect. I don't want to say anybody. I don't, I don't want to <laughs> Pastor John is here this morning. Uh, he was elected to lead our assembly of churches a year and a half ago, and I'm so honored that you're here. Would you come and greet the church and bring the word and just bring the phone, whatever you want to do? You want to use that part? Hey, good morning, and good morning. thank you so much for allowing us to come and worship with you today. Pastor Andy, we love you and Rachel and your family. So last time we were here, you were cleaning up after the flood, the great flood. It wasn't Noah's flood, but it was the great flood that hit Madison. And you've come a long way since then. Facility looking phenomenal, really great. We went downstairs to take a look to see what was going on, and you remodeled and made space for the kiddos so that they have a primary place to be. You love kids at, at Capital City Church. You love kids. Yeah. You love kids. Kids are so important, and I thank you that you're making place for them. I'm going to ask for Diane to come and share with you just a little bit about our family so you know who we are. So this is Diane. We've been married a long time. But it's really good. Love her more now than ever. And all of that is good. So, Diane. And we just celebrated 25 years. So yeah. Um, we have three children. Uh, we were pastors at Poplar Creek, which is in New Berlin, Wisconsin, for 31 years. And then we were voted in as superintendent. So, when we left the church, um, our, son, our daughter and son-in-law had been on staff with us for 21 years. Wow. When we left the church, they asked them to become the pastor. Yeah. So that was really um, a blessing. I mean, a, a, yeah, family thing. <laughs> um, but God has been so good, and we're so thankful um, and so appreciative for all that he has blessed us with. Then our older son, he and his wife and two kids are on staff at a church in Austin, Texas. So we don't get to see them quite as often. Um, and then our youngest son just graduated from North Central with his master's degree a year ago, and 23 years old. So we had a big gap between our two older children. Um, but God was so good, and, and uh, we are thankful. We never told them what we wanted them to do. We just told them, you do what God wants you to do. And whatever that is, we will be happy with that and thankful that you are loving him and serving him. So, thank you for allowing us to be with you today. Thank you very much. Well, you and Simon and Joy is evident. I really enjoyed your worship and celebrating Jesus and the presence of God in ministry as He is here today. I want to talk to you about authentic ministry, even as we celebrate six months of God doing some tremendous things here in Capital City. And sort of the report you shared exhilarated my heart and soul, and I congratulate you on many of you moving forward into arenas where you've never been, trying things that you never thought you would, and allowing God to pour himself through you to touch other people. So have faith, plan ahead, believe God, and let him do mighty things because he's up to that here at Capital City Church. And this is good. Today I want to talk to you about authentic ministry. It centers in Jesus Christ. You know Jesus Christ. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. His message is recorded for us in the Bible. We believe in the Bible. That it is inerrant, which means that as it was given to the original authors, it was the Word of God. It was recorded on for us, and we now have the record of it. And we read it, we hold to it, we adhere to it, and it changes our lives in a significant fa fashion. But we do not dilute it. We do not water it down. We hold to every word that has come from the mouth of God. And we are convinced that when we receive the word, it blesses our hearts. It changes our homes and our families. Therefore, 
I want to encourage you, Catholic City Church, to share the Word of God, to teach the Word of God, to preach the Word of God, and be bold about sharing your witness in the Savior. Do you believe that? Thank you very, very much. Now, I want to share from the Bible today about the Apostle Paul, who was born in Tarsus, which we in old language would say was Asia Minor, but in modern day we call it Turkey. He grew up in a prosperous family. At the age of 13, he moved to Jerusalem, where he studied under a very famous person named Gamaliel. He had rejected Christ. He did not receive Christianity until his conversion took place on the Damascus Road going to the country of Syria. Afterwards, he became a major spokesperson, sharing of who Christ is, seeing the church advance across the civilized world, and many churches being established and many coming to faith in Jesus Christ. We have the record of his missionary journeys in the book of Acts, and through the epistles, had further description of many things that God used him to do. So in March of 47 AD, were any of you alive then? 47 AD, <laughs> that's a long time ago, in March of 47 AD, Barnabas, who had a great influence on Saul, and Saul, a great influence on Barnabas, set out on their first missionary journey. And in doing so, they went to the island of Cyprus in the Mediterranean Sea. Barnabas and Saul were convinced of God's power, that his power through the Word of God would change lives of people. And so they went from city to city. And after going into Cyprus, they traveled on to Perga, Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. And in each location, God's word was shared and declared, and people's lives were changed. Has your life been changed? Life changed, Joey. Life changed. Being changed. And more so every day. So today, we're going to consider the content of the words they shared as they went from city to city, recorded in Acts chapter 13 and 14. And Luke described their message. And the message is very important. For in these two chapters, the message is called the Word of God. It is called the teaching about the Lord. It is the message of encouragement. It is the Word of the Lord. It's the message of His grace. It's good news. It's the Word. Do you believe all these descriptions of the good news of Jesus Christ? And when this message was shared, signs and wonders became the result of their ministry. God is committed to blessing His Word. God was committed to blessing His Word. And He is still blessing His Word. And we are here today to believe what He wants to accomplish as we've gathered in this house, which by the way is beautiful. And I really encourage you for all the work you've done to remodel and protect it from water and make sure it can be used for many people moving forward. So, first thought that I want to share with you today is God wants to use you to share the message of grace. One of the descriptions of the Word of God. Reading to you from Acts 14, verses 8 through 10. In Lystra, there was a man, sat a man, who was lame. He'd been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. By the time Paul and Barnabas arrived in Lystra, John Mark, had abandoned them. He had traveled with them for a while and he had gone home because he was afraid. This struggle of a friend leaving them must have been painful. In addition, Paul had experienced malaria, which if you've ever had, is terrible. 
which means he had suffered a whole lot while he was in the region of Pamphylia. The challenges that had come to him were large, but his faith was bigger. So challenges are large, but faith needs to be bigger. Do any of you have large challenges today? Let me know by raising your hand. Large challenges. You have large challenges today. So we need bigger faith, all right? We need bigger faith, faith bigger than large challenges. So that was what is, was going on in their lives. In time they arrived in the city of Lystra, in the region of Galatia. Lystra was the hometown of Timothy. There are two books of the New Testament named after Timothy, who came to faith in God through Jesus Christ. Lystra was a Gentile city that had no synagogue. So usually Saul and Barnabas, Paul and Barnabas went to the synagogue first, the synagogue to go to. So instead, the Holy Spirit had a different plan. If the plan you've used doesn't work in the place you are, does God have a new plan? Amen, all right? He had a new plan. So the Holy Spirit sent Paul and Barnabas to a man who could not walk. And he had not walked since birth. And God had a plan to heal him. Does God still heal people today? Yes. Amen. He does. And Paul saw that he had faith. How do you see that? Somehow the work of grace was happening in the man's life. And the Spirit of the Lord witnessed in Saul that God was working in this man. And Saul could tell that this man was believing God. And Paul commanded him to stand to his feet. And immediately, the man sprang up and began to walk. Somehow, Paul knew this. And Paul was convinced that the man was ready to receive not only the work of grace that heals the body, but we'd have to believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of his life. Now, can I met Somebody say yes, John, you can make it. Yes. All right, I got a lot of amens here. Go for it, all right? There are some Christians who struggle as to whether or not God will help them out. There are a lot of Christians who struggle. They believe God helps other people out, but they're not so sure about God helping them out. Now, one of the songs we were singing today, I really liked your songs, well done, people. I really liked your songs and was singing them with you. My heart was filled with faith and I was, was celebrating. And we talked about God being light. Do you believe he's light? Yes. All right. We talked about, about the Lord giving us promises in the Bible. And those promises can become ours and lead us and guide us. Do you believe in the promises that exist in uh, the word of God? And we talked about the Lord being our deliverer. Is he our deliverer? Yeah. Uh, strongholds, broken mountains, cast into the sea. Victory is won. Do you believe the Lord does that? Yes. Okay. And one of the confessions we had in our songs today was that God is our miracle worker. Do you believe he does that? Yes. Does he do it for other people in this room? Yes. Will he do it for Amy? Will he do a miracle for Amy? Will he do a miracle for you? Where's Mary? Mary. Mary. There's Mary. Mary, will he do a miracle for yes. you? Yes. yes. Mary, your maiden name was Davis, right? Yes. Yes, yes. My mother's name, Mary Davis, so we have something in common here. Okay, he'll do miracles for others, and he'll do miracles for you. Now, he could do a miracle for you next year, correct? Yes. And next month. Would he do a miracle for you today? Yes. He would? Yes. Would you have faith for that? For God to meet with you? Because God's word, all right, has power to heal people. God's word has power to bring miraculous provision. God's word not only can do all of that, but God's word forgives our sins so that we can be accepted by God. How many of you have been forgiven by Jesus Christ? Raise your hand if you would. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Now that's a miracle, isn't it? 
to be forgiven. All the nasty things we could do as people of any... Have you ever done any nasty something that you shouldn't have done? And all the nasty things that we do and have done, we get forgiven by Jesus Christ. And He will do that by His shed blood on the cross. And He will heal us. He will bring miraculous power to us. So as you, this church, Capital City, are committed to sharing the message of faith, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, can you expect that God will meet with you and do awesome miracles of grace? Can you expect that? Yes. Can you expect that today? Yes. So if you have a need this morning and we pray for you, would you allow me to pray with you for God to do something awesome in your life before you leave today. Would you allow us to pray in that direction, okay? Hands are up. So, Pastor, we're getting ready. We're priming the palm for the message of grace, the message of God's Word, to touch our hearts and lives, and we're ready to receive this morning. Okay, let's go to our second point. The message of grace will offend some people. Is <laughs> that an encouraging thought? Okay, Acts 14, 11 through 18, when the proud saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lycaonian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bowls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We're bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way. Yet he, was not, he has not left himself without testimony. He's shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. So, let's go into this. Paul and Barnabas had been chased out of many towns where they had preached the message of Jesus Christ. When they arrived in Leicester at first, they were popular. Is it fun to be popular? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's fun to be popular. We prefer being popular to being persecuted. Is it fun to be persecuted? No, no, it's not fun to be persecuted. But popularity can also be hard. They wanted to honor them as if they were gods. Well, they weren't gods. They knew they weren't gods. So should they accept the popularity? The answer is no. So while we do not like to be persecuted, popularity can also be hard. The people of the town thought Barnabas was the Greek god Zeus, and Paul was the god Hermes. The priest to Zeus responded by bringing oxen and garlands and wanting to offer animal sacrifices to them. Paul and Barnabas rushed into the crowd. They offered a short sermon about the true God who gives repentance from sin and faith in God through Jesus Christ and forgives and transforms and makes somebody different from the inside to the outside. So Paul and Barnabas needed to decide, are we going to accept the popularity? Are we going to steal the glory of God? Or are we going to tell them the truth? We're people just like you. We are not gods. No sacrifices today, people. And in response, share the good news of Christ. So welcome to the ministry. Some people are thankful for the message of faith. Some people are. You are. That's why you are here. While others are not. Have you found there's some people in Madison who are not thankful for the message of faith in Jesus Christ? Have you found that out? It's true in most every town within our state that some people respond, some people do not. At one people, some are, at one point, some people are accepting, and at, at another point, people will offer insults. Have you ever been insulted for being a follower of Jesus? Put down, made fun of, rejected. 
because you have faith in God through Jesus Christ. For brief moments when we are popular, life feels like we live in a penthouse. Ooh. But sometimes when we are insulted, life can smell like the outhouse. <laughs> life ever smelled like the outhouse. <laughs> when, when I was a youth pastor, I had a number of youth pastors in Wausau, Wisconsin. We had this farmyard party and took the church out to the Paulson's dairy farm where they milked cows, had lots of cows. I think they milked about 75 cows at a time twice a day and we were having this big party out of the farm, and well, we needed the bathroom, so uh, I, I dug holes for an outhouse, and we put up an outhouse. Have you ever dug holes for an outhouse? Have you ever dug holes? <laughs> no, no. Back here, okay, dug holes for an outhouse. It's a charming work to do, to dig holes for an outhouse. We put up the outhouse. It was a three-seater. Yes, three people could go in there at the same time. Of course, that's another story. But he was at the same time. Uh, and outhouses stinketh. They stinketh and they're fly. <laughs> All right, some, sometimes life can stinketh like the outhouse when people are not wanting to respond to us with warmth and reject us because we are followers of Jesus Christ. But here's the, the thought that I want to share with you. We decide to please God above man. With me? We walk, we walk to the mark, the drummer beat of Jesus Christ. We walk to please the Lord. We walk to do His will. We are His. We want to please Him from the bottom of our hearts. Still with me? So whether we're popular or not, whether or not Capital City Church is popular or not, you are here to be a witness to faith in Madison so that other people can know the message of Jesus Christ, the declaration of God's Word, can receive the Savior and receive and know the forgiveness of sin. Are we together on this? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? So we're going to do it. Amen. We're going to do it. We're celebrating six months of great joy and great things and awesomeness of God among you. And are we going to keep going forward? Yes. 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 Are we going to go backwards? No. Even if people persecute us? No. Even if life smells like the outhouse? No. <laughs> but don't go into the three-seater. If somebody else is in there, don't go. All right, that's just a little point for me. All right, third thing that I want to share with you is God wants to use you to prove his message of grace. Yeah, he wants to use you to prove his message of grace. Acts 14, 19, 20. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. Now, here's the same people who wanted to say they're gods and offer sacrifices. All right? They won him over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, we assume they were praying, he got up. Whoa! He got up and went back into that city. Into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Durban. Religious zealous who opposed Barnabas and Paul, traveled over a hundred miles to pursue them in this city of Lyconia, causing them trouble. They came from Iconium and Antioch, and they persuaded the people who wanted to offer sacrifices and say they're gods into stoning them. Hateful. Religious zealots. And Paul was stoned. He was beaten. He was pummeled. He was assaulted. His body was bruised. He was bloody. He fell to the ground. 
and they thought he was dead as a doornail. The disciples gathered around Paul to grieve, to mourn. They thought he was dead. Now this, this city was hometown to Timothy. Maybe Timothy was already a convert to Christ. Maybe he was there. As they were grieving, as they were sorrowing, as their hearts were torn apart because of the opposition that had come their way, Paul began to stir. His body began to move. Amazingly, he began to, to get up and he rose up on his feet on his own strength. The man they thought was dead was alive. Do you think it was the grace of God? I do too. Paul picked himself up out of the dirt. Have you ever had to do that? Pick yourself up out of the dirt. He wiped the blood from his face, his hands and feet. He regained his composure. Walked into town. This is the place where they had stoned him. And he walked back into town in Lystra to face the people who wanted him dead. Now Lystra was obviously an unpredictable city. The people there, fickle, hello, make him a god and then stone him to death. Make up your mind, people! <laughs> Have you ever known anybody like that? They liked you one moment and the next moment they want to spit on you. Alright? People can be funny. Do you know how funny people? <laughs> people can be just downright funny. So this was a dangerous and unpredictable place. Paul was faithful in loving these people in the face of opposition. Now, we'll put that in there. To love them, the very same people who had stoned him almost to death, what put, what, where did it come from to love them back? You ever had somebody who was mean, but God put grace in you to love them back? Have you ever had somebody who was mean and you didn't want to love them back? <laughs> All right, Paul did. Afterwards, he and Barnabas traveled on to Derba for rest. And after recovering, they went back to Lystra again. Hello, people. Do you really think you'd want to do that? I think I'd kind of bypass the city. No, I wouldn't want to go back there. But they went back there. And then further, after going to Lystra, they went to Iconium and Antioch, where the people came from, that led the riot that stoned Paul and almost killed him. Now let me tell you something about Paul. He had previously persecuted Christians. Do you recall that? He got a letter from uh, the chief priests bound for Damascus, Syria, to arrest them. He had supervised the stoning of Stephen. It's recorded in the book of Acts. And Stephen did not get up. Stephen died, and Paul was there presiding over the mess. There are some that think that he could have presided over the rest of thousands of Christians, and possibly thousands of Christian deaths. Now, whether it's that large or not, I don't know, but this man who was the persecutor of Christians was now himself being persecuted. And I'm sure he knew it, that he had done the same thing that had happened to him. And I'm sure there was a grief in his heart for what he had done to hurt others. And perhaps that's where he got the grace to forgive these people. He had done the same thing. Sometimes we, we've done bad things in our past. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes we've done bad things. But Jesus forgave us, amen? Jesus forgave us. And because he forgave us, it moves in our heart to forgive other people who do bad things. Uh -huh. Because we were like them. Yeah. Yeah, so we forgive them. Still with me? So we forgive them. So we forgive them. And we trust God 
to put in our hearts a love for them, even though right now they're not very lovable. Do you know anybody who's right now not very lovable? Right now. Right now, just kind of yeah. acting like a jerk. And they need to be loved back. God forgave us. We forgive them. And we're going to love them back. And why do we do it? Because of the gospel of grace. Because the gospel of grace is that powerful. And so, Paul and Barnabas confronted their persecutors by returning to the cities, Lystra, and two other cities from which their persecutors had come. So what's the response of the church when people are mean? What's the response of the church? We love them back. What's the response of a Christian woman when somebody is mean to her? She loves them back. What's the response of a Christian man when somebody's mean to him? He loves them back. And so when people persecute, what's the response that we should have? We love them back. When people in Madison don't like the church and what we believe and that we're Bible-based and want to say that we are just wigged out, we love them back, amen? We love them back. Because somewhere in our past, we probably didn't love either. But God forgave us, so we love him back. So, where do we want to go with this message today? The ministry of God's Word results in signs and wonders. Do you know a person who loves somebody back when they're being treated wrong is a sign and a wonder? To love somebody when they're nasty, that's a sign and wonder. It's the evidence of God's grace at work. Amen? Amen? For somebody to get off, up, up off the ground after they've been stoned and want to care for the people who did it, that's a, a sign and wonder. It's the evidence of God loving through somebody who's been hurt, but loving back in the face of opposition. And then you have the whole issue of somebody who's lame from birth. And the gospel message is shared. And Paul looks in his face and sees that there's faith. And God is ready to do something awesome. And the miracle takes place. That's a sign and wonder. Amen? It's a sign and have any of you ever received a sign and wonder in your life? Yeah? Okay, lots of hands. Sign and wonder. I have so many that have happened in my life. When I was in college, I had a bone that was floating around in this knee. And it, my knee locked up. Student at the University of Illinois, which is large, like University of Wisconsin here in Madison, large campus, about the same number of students. And I, I went from class to class on crutches because my knee would not bend and I couldn't walk on it. It was so painful. And there was a point where I was scheduled for surgery, scheduled for surgery, and then the bone chip went away. It went away. And a doctor didn't take that away. It went away. There was an x-ray before, there's an x-ray after, and the bone chip went away. I've never had the surgery yet. The goodness of God, God's grace, amen. He does good stuff. He's faithful God. He knows what to do to help us out. Does he pay attention to our human need? Yes, he does. Does he know where you walk and what you need today? Is he caring for you and wanting to show himself mighty on your behalf? And the answer is... Yes. Yes, absolutely. And are we a believing people? Yes, and I see faith on your faces. Did you know that I've seen faith on your faces? Paul saw faith. Yes, Joey, I see faith in your face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see faith. I see faith in your faces. Could it be me? You're sitting there. Could it be me today? 
to be God in me. Could the message of grace, the message of the gospel, could the message of Jesus Christ be the impact upon my life as, as I'm in this room at Capital City Church on September, what's today? It's today's date, 15th? September 15th. Yes, at 11.25 a.m. Could the Spirit of the Lord be here to meet with you and do for you some awesome work of grace that will change and transform your life and you will never be the same again. Amen? Okay, how many of you are ready to receive that need from God, that grace for you, that help that overcomes, that makes your circumstance different than what it was, and you will put up your hand, all right? All right, then let's move from where you are to up here, across the front, because we're going to pray and ask God to do mighty works of grace this morning. So if you can stand, if you're in a motorized chair, come. <laughs> come, and let's meet together and expect 